What if I told you that you could take a few photographs of the room you're in right now, feed them into an AI algorithm, and it could give you a live interactive video where you could move the camera around your room and you could see what it looks like from every viewpoint, not only like a photo scan, but it would also have live interactive lighting effects like reflections and opacity. Well, you don't need to imagine that because that's already a thing. It's called NERF or neural radiance fails. And in a lot of ways, I think it's gonna replace traditional photo scanning or photogrammetry. Now, if you watch the channel for a while, you probably know I'm a pretty big fan of photo scans. I use them a lot. I make about three to six minutes of original animation every couple of weeks. That's about the equivalent of a feature length movie every year that I make by myself. So anything I can do to speed up their workflow is worth it to me. So I love the fact that I can just go into Sketchfab, find a car scan or a building or whatever, drop it in the background and it looks good. But what I've found over the years is that photo scanning is very, very limited. Whereas this new system, Nerf, fixes a lot of those problems and actually adds new possibilities that I never even thought possible with photo scanning. So in order to get on the same level here, I'm just gonna quickly talk about how traditional photo scanning actually works. It's pretty simple. So basically you just take a input series of photographs or a video. In this case, just imagine that this is a video of a monkey that I've recorded. And we wanna turn it into a 3D model. So we take those frames and we feed them into the photogrammetry software. And we say, okay, just track these points, just like camera tracking, find all the points and then find where those points are on all the other pictures. Look for the similar points. Photogrammetry software goes boop, 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 figures out the points. That's called a sparse point cloud. But in order to, for that to actually be useful, we need to say, okay, well, based on how those points are moving in relation to each other, can you figure out where they are in 3D space? And the photogrammetry software is like, fuck yeah, trigonometry or whatever. And it can figure that out. I don't understand the math, but it can do it. Once you have that sparse point cloud, which is now three dimensional, we can say, okay, can you fill in all the blanks, add loads more points based on what you know? And it goes, yeah, this is your dense point cloud. So now we have this cloud of points in 3D space, which roughly looks like our original geometry. Then if we want to turn that into a mesh, that's actually really simple. We just need to connect all of those points together with edges, turn them into triangles and slap a projection of our original photographs on for a texture. That gives us a photo scan and it looks pretty good usually but it does have some huge drawbacks. Because the sparse point cloud only has a certain amount of data to work with, it can't really do high frequency details like the leaves on a tree, people's fingers, hair, you know, very, very small details, cables, wires, things like that. It just does a terrible job with them. It kind of just makes this one blobby mesh from a distance looks all right, but usually doesn't look great. It doesn't understand opacity. It doesn't understand lighting effects like specularity and reflections. All that stuff just gets burned into the texture. So if you move around a 3D scan of like a very reflective metal object, it doesn't look like it's metal at all. It doesn't look like the reflections move because they don't. But with Nerf, we can solve all those problems. The way that Nerf basically works is you start off the same way. You take the, the input video or the photographs, but this time you give it to an AI system. The AI system uses interpolation, which basically means it draws all of the frames in between the frames you've took. So if you've took a picture every 10 degrees, it'll fill in every single degree from every different direction. You end up with this kind of fake photosphere. Now the AI knows what this scene should look like from every single direction. Then once it does that, it uses something called volume rendering in order to actually make this an output file, right? Something we can view. Volume rendering is not a new thing. It's been around since I think the seventies, but the basic idea is that you have a volume, right? Like a bounding box and you have the camera in various points around this box, wherever you're moving the camera through, you fire out a ray, right? This is called ray marching. You fire out one ray and you can sample along that ray. Every, whatever the distance unit is, you take a sample inside that bounding box. What we've already done is we've projected all of the, the information that we have about the scene. So every point in the 3D space has a coordinate. Every point has a viewing angle, like a vector to the camera. It has RGB value and it has an alpha, right? Opacity, density. So all we need to do then is we fire through a ray and we take a look at all of those values, collect all those values, 
Then we go back through the scene and we rank them. So we say, okay, well, this pixel right at the back of the scene, that's the first one. Then this next pixel is totally opaque, right? It's a brick wall. So we're not going to say this first one, we can ignore it. And then the next one, well, that's a piece of glass. So that's semi-transparent. And I'll stack all these things on top of each other. Obviously, opaque things will just wipe out what's below them. But now we have transparency. And because we have the viewing angle information, we can now have reflectivity as well. So you can photo scan, or you can nerf, sorry, um, like a mirror. You can take a photograph of uh, a drink or something like that, or a glass object, an ornament. And you can turn that into like something that can be viewed from any angle and it's see-through. You get all these nice high frequency details because you don't have the limitations of a sparse point cloud. It's amazing, guys. In fact, you can even do moving objects. I've seen nerfs of like where it also has a time element to on top of all these other factors. It also like records how these pixels change over time. So you can record like a moving person with a camera from every view. And then you can just like rotate that person around or rotate the camera around them. You can do all sorts of mad shit. Like it's legitimately insane. I'm watching the videos of this stuff and it's like compared to traditional photo scanning, it leaves it in the dirt. Now, there's probably some things that it'll never replace about traditional photo scanning. Maybe AI in general probably will replace those things when you can just type in, give me a tractor model or whatever in a can, which we're not far away from. But there's so many things that you can use this for. And it's, it comes with its own density map as well, which is like ridiculously clean, like for use in compositing or for, you know, changing the background or something like that. Like having a nice density map is really important. And it just comes with that out of the bag because it, it generates one of those as it works. So anyway, guys, I just wanted to fill you in that this is a thing. It's coming. It's going to be awesome. Will Blender have something like this in the future? Well, maybe, because actually they talked about a Blender conference. Um, there's going to be all this new AI initiative with Blender to kind of keep up with the times. So maybe something like this will come along. I'll leave some links for you to read in the description. Um, I know this is another just like talking head video. In the last video, I did actually say, what do you think of these videos? Do you want to see more of them or not? A couple of people actually came up to me at the Blender conference, which was awesome, by the way. And they said they like these videos, so I'm probably going to keep making them. Uh, by the way, anyone, if you did come up to me at the Blender conference, everybody who did was ridiculously cool. It was a very weird situation for me to be in, like being semi-famous for a weekend or whatever, like having people come up to me who I don't know and just introduce themselves. That was very strange. Like I expected, you know, maybe five or ten people to introduce themselves, and it was like, I would say 60, 60 different people came up, which was bizarre, but everybody was very cool. People were pretty understanding that this was strange for me as well. Everyone was really polite. I expected at least a few dickheads. It didn't happen, which is fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to keep making videos like this if people enjoy them, but let me know in the comments what you think anyway. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I'll see you in a couple of days.